Hey, everybody. Thanks for checking out another episode of the Aaron Advantage podcast, continuing the series on association staff and presidents. I am joined today by Andy Rudolph, the president of the Indiana Association of Realtors for 2022. Andy, how you doing today? Man, thanks for having me in here, right? It seems surreal because I've known you've had this studio and I've always asked you out for lunch a bunch of times. And yeah. a lot of the times you can't because you're in, this, I'm in this studio. studio. I know. Not, not only that, but it, the fact that I actually got you in town at a time that I'm available is is pretty spectacular. Lucky I'm heading back to Indianapolis tomorrow morning, actually, for two more days of meetings in Indianapolis. But I love it. Love to serve. So uh, let's talk a little bit about the fact that, that you do love to serve. You've been a member of the association, uh, obviously, for most of your career. How did you get started into real estate? And then what drove you to want to become the man, the myth, the legend, the president of the Indiana Association? <laughs> I don't know all about that. <laughs> I'll wind it back just a little bit. So I have an engineering degree uh, from Purdue. I uh, thought that was what I wanted to do. As a matter of fact, if you would have asked me, what's the one thing you don't want to do for the rest of your life? I would have said, I don't want to be a realtor because because your dad was my dad was a realtor right so he spent 40 years uh owned our own business tri-county realty uh did very well uh for our family it kept me fed it kept me clothed it got me through college so it was really good to me uh but it was one thing that i didn't think i saw myself doing so i went away uh, i lived for i did my internship with walt disney imagineering um out of college that, that's a whole other podcast that we got a, lots of fun stories from there whole other <laughs> podcast uh but i finished that up uh then i went out and moved to boston and i lived out out there for about two years uh, trying to figure out what I uh, wanted to do with myself. Didn't love Boston. Um, liked Southern Indiana a little bit better. Also wanted to move home and marry my high school sweetheart. So a big shout out to Carrie if you're uh, listening or watching. Um, that was a big reason that I came back. Whenever I did, I was I was bartending at Taroni's Pizza. Like I was just trying to figure out what to do with myself and engineering for what I did, which was uh, audio video system design and acoustics. So don't um, judge me too hard with all of this. No, I'm impressed by it. It's actually <laughs> set up pretty well. Um, uh, so I did that for a while. As I was bartending, though, my dad said, hey, I'm, I'm doing this flip house over here. If you'd go get your real estate license, I'll sell it to you and I'll let you keep the commission. Nice. And uh, next thing you know, 20 years now have passed because... <laughs> Because you just get the bug whenever you get started in it, especially for those of us that uh, have a penchant for kind of wanting to talk to people, help people, and uh, and are in a sales mindset. And that's been a lot of what uh, what I've done. So I've been 20 years now in the business. Um, Don't look a day over 30, you jerk. I know. <laughs> I keep always forgetting how young he is too, compared to where I'm at in life. Um, but uh, yeah, we we uh, um, got started in it, got a little bit engaged in our local association when one of the members uh, called and said, hey, we've got a committee we'd want you to serve on. Uh, jumped on, served on that, served on our services corporation. Yeah. I actually served as high as the president of that services corporation for a while. Uh, that's who handles all of our lockboxes and our MLS access and all that kind of stuff. Um, served in that capacity. And while I was doing that, I uh, did a conversion. So I, I'm now working for FC Tucker Imgi yep. uh, in Evansville and uh, really love it there. Joined them about seven years ago. And at the exact same time, I was going through the Indiana Leadership Academy. So uh, the Indiana Association of Realtors has a great leadership academy, which you know, because you've yep. been through the program as well. And our, our local association president, Jason yeah. Brown, he's also been through it. Absolutely. So we've had a lot actually from our local association that have gone through the process. But I think it does a great job of engaging uh, members to think about a leadership role, whether it be in their own business, right, for their own business development, also as well as doing things for their local association or hopefully for the state association as well. So it's strengthening that bond uh, for leadership. And it teaches you everything from how a bill becomes a law kind of yep. stuff to uh, what the Su Indiana Supreme Court uh, deals with. Uh, it talks about leadership. It talks about governance structures, uh, financing. As a matter of fact, that's my, my appointment tomorrow. I'm going up to actually teach to the Leadership Academy this year. So oh, how times have changed there from you taking go. it. From a student to the leader. So, there we go. <laughs> add one to the Jedi Master. Um, no, I I, uh, I started uh, the Leadership Academy in 2013. So I was a graduate of that uh, class. And one of the guys, our moderator actually, uh, um, came out and was telling us his leadership journey. Yep. And uh, and he was talking about being the youngest uh, leader. Chip Miller yep. was the youngest president at that time in the uh, association's history. A record that I'm not going to be able to break, I found uh, out. <laughs> trying. You're trying. But uh, Chip's a fantastic guy, and, and I consider him a good friend 
to this day. As a matter of fact, I had him do my installation this last year because of something that he said. And during that process, he was talking about his leadership journey. And he said uh, one thing that struck me uh, quite strongly, and that was, you know, don't wait until the last 10 percent of your career to go through this process of going into state leadership. And the reason is because you you learn so much throughout that process that you want to have enough time to be able to share that with all the other members and give back to the association by the things that you've learned. And I thought that was really, really eye opening. So I decided pretty well that day, uh, or if not very soon after, uh, that it was a path that I wanted to, to uh, explore. So it took some time then and got uh, onto the board of directors. And then uh, shortly after that, onto our executive committee working my way through uh, several committees. I served on finance and I served on uh, professional standards and several other things there and was uh, fortunate enough to be uh, voted in as treasurer a couple of years ago. Yep. Had some great leaders in front of me. Shout out to to Brian Thompson and Bernice Hellman and Roger Lundy, uh, the the three leaders that all came before me. And, and uh, you know, they they helped kind of walk me through that process and get me <laughs> get me used to and comfortable to yeah. to that role. So we'll walk you through that process and then set you up for massive changes that we've been get, uh, yeah. undergoing the last couple of years to those same three people. I have to say, thanks for doing Doing the timing of uh, of a governance restructure in Indiana, so uh, the Indiana Association of Realtors went through about a year and a half ago the process of, of restructuring. So we had a, a really large uh, board of directors, somewhere mm-hmm. in excess of fifty. Uh, we've we've shrunk that down significantly um, to, to a more nimble number of seventeen, um, and and part of that was from guidance of our previous CEO. Um, uh, he was very instrumental in in giving us uh, some. Um, constructive ideas about what we might do. And those three great leaders I just mentioned kind of ran with it, did a whole lot of study groups, a whole lot of discussion points, oh, yeah. and and really brought a lot of people into that decision-making process. But I can tell you, being the first guy, so, so our CEO retired. Yep. Right? We got a brand new governance structure, and I became president. And I was like, this is all new. <laughs> what but am I doing? <laughs> that's the best part of this. I said it in my installation speech. I just came right out and said, listen, folks, I don't know what I'm doing. I'll let you in on a little secret. I don't know what I'm doing. But then neither did the other hundred people that were president before I was. So, exactly. um, you know, it's comforting. You surround yourself with really smart people people Mm -hmm. um that will uh, set you up to succeed and that's exactly what happened at the state level so you know you've said a couple things that really uh in my mind embody who andy rudolph is to me in my own personal real estate career it was about getting involved and getting the members engaged and uh surrounding yourself with other very like-minded people and it brings me back to the very first time i remember meeting you which was at a ypn event when we were sitting and talking in ypn for those who don't know is the young professionals network the whole goal is to get young people who are in the industry involved because the average age of a realtor member is about 53 years old. And we're sitting here trying to keep it like 40 and under. And it's like, where do we find these people? How do we get them to build a business and do these things? And it was after one of those events that we sat outside and we just told war stories about all oh. the fun stuff that we've learned throughout the years. And it let all of us know, hey, even guys like Andy, who have been doing this a long time, because at that time you were already 10, 15 years in the business. Even these guys got started and had to go through the hard times that we all do, and uh, it was encouraging for a guy like me to be like, okay, this weirdness isn't just something I'm experiencing. Oh, no. We all get to experience the weird. I mean, weird comes out in real estate. I had somebody ask me one time, they're like, hey, client said, hey, what's it like in a in this condition in a typical real estate transaction? I go, I don't know. I've only done this for 20 years. I haven't <laughs> seen two that are the same yet, you know, uh, um, because there is always something different around the corner, but that's what makes it exciting, right? That's right. what draws a lot of us to the business because it is it is different it's always changing I, this is going to be the longest i sit down all day today <laughs> because i'm even on the phone i like to pace around my own office and everything else so it, it's one of those businesses where you get to do that you don't know in the morning what you're going to do later that evening right and and that's one of those things that uh even for a guy like me who likes everything structured you know i've got all these wonderful systems in place to take care of my clients to make sure that on the things that are the same i do it one specific way every time as much as possible. And it's just basically the timing on when these things happen and then adapting to all the stuff that goes on. My wife still asks me all the time, hey, what time do you think you'll be home tonight? I'm like, I don't know. It's only eight in the morning. Ask me around three. <laughs> I can text you whenever I'm headed home. Yeah. That's normally the way we have to handle it in our household. Because Absolutely. It, and you thank God for our spouses and being able to understand that part of the business. And, and my wife's been fantastic about it. I'm sure Kendra's the same way. And, and She does a good is. job. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. But the nice part is that we can also pull away to be able to do other things. 
place. So right. uh, it just takes a little bit of discipline, right, in the business mm-hmm. to be able to know when to be able to shut down and say, hey, it's it's a rest period now for me. Right. I need to spend time with my family. I need to do that kind of stuff. This weekend's a perfect example, right? I knew I had some business that had to be done. It was on Sunday. I've got a bunch of listings that went live this morning. I had some, you know, I had to get signs up. I had to get uh, key boxes loaded. I had to get the MLS input in. I had to make sure the pictures look good, all that kind of stuff. So I did that, but I scheduled it. I love block scheduling. That's the thing that I think has been the biggest turning point in my business in the last five years, at the very least, was oh. just really structuring those blocks of time and saying, hey, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it during this time. I'm going to take care of everything else, but making sure to block in time. Yep. That's also for the unknown, right? So, uh, but then, Flex time. You got to have flex time, time built in. Yeah. Yeah. Got to have it. I've looked at the calendar some days and i go there's not a 15 minute break in here i'm gonna be in trouble by about 5 30 <laughs> i have those days many times you know uh i've gotten i've gotten pretty lucky as i was saying before we started recording you know i i try to do a lot of things and i want to make sure that i can get them all done and then i've started realizing that i've got too much on my plate to even remember to put some of the things on my calendar so i've got my sister now who's in charge of recording my or setting up my recording sessions shout out to Alyssa. um and that's why we're here today because i just looked at my calendar this morning i was like oh i'm supposed to record with andy today so those those blocks definitely uh, help out knowing I'm, that that's coming. And I'm glad she set it up that way too. I kind of joked. You guys don't know the relationship that Aaron and I have personally. We are really pretty close, anyways. So we go out to lunch probably once or twice a week. Uh, and and uh, whenever Alyssa me- messaged me, she's like, "Okay, very proper." And this is when we're going to do it. Aaron has times at this time, and I'm like, well, "That's great. Tell him I'll take the 11 o'clock hour because at noon we're going out for lunch." <laughs> and, and you know what? That's honestly uh, that was my favorite response I've gotten so far to that uh first off the appreciation of the professionalism which is always nice to oh, have yeah. uh, and then the oh and by the way here's a screenshot of it and this is what i said back to her so go ahead and b- block it in your calendar <laughs> So well, it's neat, and it's a great opportunity to see it and see somebody that I know uh, that appreciates this kind of stuff and has this kind of reach to uh, to just ask simply ask me at this point to come out and talk with you and, and stuff. That's fun. So. I appreciate it. Well, hey, you know, we ha- we talked a little bit about all of the changes that have been hitting the Indiana Association. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff that's happened over the last year, year and a half. Um, something I wanted to kind of ask you, you know, I talked to Mark, who's the uh, the administrator. Let's call it what it is. He's, he's the CEO, but his job is to make sure that he's taking care of the administrative side and everything else you're more the president uh not more the president you are the president which means you're also in charge of like the member engagement and stuff and things that i've seen that have changed uh with this governance restructure that i think are amazing and i'll let you speak to are um the vip that we've put together and the uh opportunity for more of the membership to get engaged and be involved in com- uh, the committees and things so um talk to us a yeah. little bit about the thought process behind that and kind of where that vip came from super excited because again like i said we had a new governance structure going into this year and we had a ceo that had only been on the job for about a month and a half yeah. right um and he's killing and it by the way he is doing awesome we could have done no better than to pick mark fisher as our ceo but uh i i will say that we kind of went in with this eyes wide open in my personal um pet peeve is whenever I go into a meeting and we try to pitch an idea and somebody goes, well, we can't do it that way because we've always done it this other way. Yeah, right. I, I hate, hate that. That's my hate number one rule. So I was like, okay, so we've got a clean slate here. We've got a new CEO. We've got a new governance structure. What can we do that's completely out of the box thinking? And a couple of other things that kind of came to the forefront. And one of them uh, is kudos to our, our staff there, uh, uh, Kathy Harbaugh. Yep. Who is uh, executive vice president of of membership and also runs our our RECP, our our uh, real estate school that the association owns. Um, she came up with this idea, kind of mimicking off of what NAR does, mm-hmm. right? So the yeah. National Association uh, does a a a interest profile that they have to fill out whenever you're applying for a committee. Yep. Right. So it tells, Hey, well, give me some ideas about what you do, resume type things. And then also your interest levels so that we can match people with what's the most, um, uh, what they would be best engaged in. Right. We want everyone to feel like when they're involved at the state level, that they are doing something where they feel fulfilled. Right. Right. And I think, um, making sure that you feel fulfilled in the role in which you're playing, uh, it goes a long way to getting the best out of people. Yep. Um, so we 
filled out this Indiana VIP. Uh, you kind of do the exact same thing that the state does. You fill out all your information. And then we've got this kind of treasure trove of people to look for. So whenever, as president, you fill out your committee structure, those that are kind of coming off of committees, you have opportunities to fill these slots and these gaps. And so I had a list of like 150 people that filled out these VIP roles that I could look through. People I'd never heard of inside of the state of Indiana, but they showed passion towards politics. They showed passion towards advocacy efforts, right. to RPAC, to the forms that we have, um, all of those different things. Just there's one that just says like parties, like we, if you <laughs> want to be involved in being in, uh, and helping out the association planning events, right? There's a role for that. And so to be able to find those people and plug them in, I think was super, super awesome. The second thing we've done is we've hired a director of member engagement. Yeah. Um, and that was part of, of Mark's uh, choosing. He's in charge of all of our, our staff positions, but we had a, a former IAR employee who was looking to get back into the area. She is, uh, done a fantastic role so far, but she's doing all of those kind of things. So looking at other ideas that we can do to be able to plug people in in other ways. And back to your point about the YPN, right? Yeah. We talked about the Young Professionals Network. That's how you and I got to know each other for the first time, right? Because we have a local one for Southern Indiana. Yeah. But not all of our associations, our local associations have the ability to be able to do that. Uh, we have four uh, uh, in the state of Indiana. So I looked at it and said, hey, if we could take those four chairs in those local association leaders and add in a couple of other young people that I know are interested in right. getting back to their association, can we do a statewide YPN? A lot of states that do it, but Indiana never has. So we are kicking off a statewide YPN this year. I don't know. This might be an actual thing that we might have to cut this, but I, 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 th I, I think, think it's we going to be, we'll, we'll let Kathleen be the one that tells us whether we cut this or not. All right. <laughs> good. If not, it's just a great surprise because I want to see more and more people engaged in it. So whenever we do the kickoff for this later in the year, we're going to have everybody uh, involved in the state of Indiana. Yeah. So we always call it young or young at heart or young to the business, <laughs> young in any young way in any you way. can come up with. Now, I will say, uh, I'm going to put you on blast here a little bit. I remember having a conversation about this in San Francisco oh. at the National Association of Realtors Convention. And I was just like, you know, I wish we, you know, I wish somebody at some point would think about doing like a statewide YPN. That'd be something cool to do. You help plant the seed. Yeah, I help plant the seed. And Andy looked me square in the eye and he goes, yeah, you have a couple years left for that. And at the time, I was 31 years old. I was like, yeah, dude, like nine years left for that. He goes, oh, my bad. I always forget how young you actually are. And so I was actually old enough that I don't work towards the under 40 crowd yeah. anymore. I couldn't go for the 40 under 40 at that point. I was so. like, come on, dude. Give me a little bit of credit here. <laughs> you just look mature for your age. I'll take man. it. I'll take it. So, uh, But no, I'm super excited. And I definitely want to make sure that we get at least a portion of this into the podcast. Because I think setting something up like that under your tenure as president... Uh, coming in and getting you know even more of the young people because we are seeing the average age of the realtor trend downward a little bit because we are seeing more young people get into the business as well it is I, you know the only thing that scares me a little bit about that is we also have a membership count right now that has not been through a hard time in real estate. It's been great, right? So yep. it's been easy for folks to be able to, I say easy, it's never easy to get into this business, Correct. right? In the first year, you are not going to make much more than minimum wage uh, unless you're just a real rock star. But as you build up your business, it becomes more and more easy. Now that's easy to do when the market is really solid. Mm -hmm. And we've got a large portion of our membership that has not been in the business more than eight years. So they yep. haven't seen that market downturn that I remember living through. And I remember at that time, like I got into all, I learned to lay tile in a flip house <laughs> I was doing at that time because there just wasn't much real estate happening. Um, so hopefully we're not trending towards another one of those times. Yep. Uh, we've been, we've been riding high for a long time and I hope that continues, but uh, uh, we want to make sure that we've got all of our members prepared for the eventuality that's there. So again, we have a lot of younger people or newer people to the business and we're going to try to make a lot of programs that help them survive through an economic change right. whether it be a softening of the market or not so we're looking at a lot of different opportunities for that some of it's in engagement in the business others professional development uh salesmanship tools mm -hmm. those kind of things and, and we've got a great opportunity with that with our with our ownership of our uh, real estate school and our acp yeah and some of the great conversations i've been having you know uh i've been fortunate enough to serve on several committees with the association uh, at the state level um they Things that I see changing and that I'm really excited about are the conversations we're having around the education of the realtor. Because to get a license, that education, I hate to say it, it's basically worthless to build a business. It's great to get a license and understand. It keeps you from getting, getting It keeps sued. you from getting sued. Yeah. Great for that stuff. 
not any great content on how to actually develop and build a business. And there's been a lot of conversations that we've had as brokerage owners and managers and things like that to, for our agents, which is always great. But to hear those conversations happening around the state and some of the content that they're thinking about putting out to help people through that process has been extremely exciting to me to hear that kind of stuff being being yeah. tossed around as well well the last piece of that change puzzle i was telling you about before again with new ceo new governance structure the last thing that we've put into place and we just started the process here recently we started doing a strategic plan yep. for the association so we are in the process of doing that now should unveil it by our conference in september mark your calendars um reach out to indianarealtors.com to look up that date um the uh the strategic plan will be unveiled at that time. So we've gone through the initial process, a couple of days of meeting with a consultant. We've had countless uh, interviews with stakeholders, whether it be mm -hmm. team leaders, uh, broker owners, uh, selling agents, all the all the gamut uh, AEs. Um, we've done a, a good job of looking through that, and there's been some some interesting things that have come to the top, and I think they've all been in a really really positive um, uh, way, looking at how really. As a state association, we are very, very successful. We're very good at what we do. Right. Well, there are some things where we can show some improvement, and some of that is that non-CE professional development, uh, member engagement, some things like that, which we could do a little bit better on. But, you know, we have other things that we excel at so great. I'm going to tell one story. So... Um, you know, I lived through the pandemic time of, of leadership. So I had yeah. just come on and I'm the treasurer of the association. And, and they're like, hey, by the way, all our meetings are, are canceled. Everything's on Zoom. Everything's canceled. And not only that, but we go into a government lockdown. Yep. Right. So we go into a government lockdown and I was doing Zooms every day. I was doing Zooms all the time. The so first I, time I heard the, the term Zoom fatigue came from you. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And and I have the coffee mug to prove it that says <laughs> I'm on mute yeah. right here. I got one. Yeah. Um, but that, uh, um, that time we all, you know, everything shut down. Everybody was stay at home orders. All that kind of stuff was there. And they were only letting out essential businesses. Mm -hmm. So I happened to be on with our CEO and our leadership team. We were trying to figure out what kind of message do we send back to our to our broker owners, right? And into our members around the state. What do we tell them we're doing to make progress towards being able to reopen our business? And as I'm on the call, our CEO looks down at his phone and he goes, I'm sorry, I got to take this. It's the governor's office calling. Right. That shows you not only did we not have to reach out to them, we have such a strong advocacy effort in mm -hmm. the state capitol that they reached out to us and said, hey, explain to us your position in this market. And right. are you guys essential? And, and 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 tell us why. And we did. We explained that in a very logical, safe manner. We told them that we would be we would be. Uh, uh, conducting business in a safe uh, and effective manner, but that it's housing. It is an essential part of business absolutely, um, uh, and in of life. So, um, you know, that is the prime example of the connections and the, um, and the, the amount of support we have from the governor's office and mm -hmm. from the legislature as a whole, we can make great strides. And we, and with that, you know, one of the things that our old CEO, Carl Barron used to say is that, you know, we're one of the largest, if not only advocates for homeowners, right? Right. Our FSC groups for homeowners. So not only are we looking out for our best interest, yeah, as business owners and, and, and as our profession, yes, but we're also looking out for what's best for the American homeowner and the Indiana homeowner. And that's a really important distinction to make. Absolutely. And, and, you know, one of those things that you're talking about is not only are we such a powerful advocacy group and everything else, they did reach out to us and we were one of the first states to be declared essential oh, as yeah. real estate workers. Oh yeah. I mean, there were states that were shut down for months. Our and neighboring folks in Michigan, absolutely poor, poor folks did not pr uh, practice business for a while. Yeah. Right. So we were very, very fortunate to do it. And we did it in a way that I felt uh, very proud of to say that we were responsibly going back into business. Absolutely. And I'll, and I'll just harken back to the, uh, I don't know if everybody remembers or not, but uh, literally the uh, CEO's office overlooks the state house in Indiana. And he can actually see the governor's office from his window. Oh yeah. Uh, so we we not only have a Look. good we not only have a good advocacy presence. We've got a fantastic physical presence there. Location, as well. location, location. Maybe Scotty will stick in a picture of the uh, of the realtor, <laughs> of the realtor building, building there with the state house behind it. But yeah, we've got a great uh, opportunity there in buying that building. Um, it's a great non dues revenue source for us because yep. we rent out the vast majority of it. Yep. Uh, we use it for our offices, for the offices of our ACP, our school, um, and. 
and uh, and we've got just a great opportunity there to be so close. We we switched up another thing that we did new this year. We used to have a legislative conference. We bring people in from all over the state, and two hundred or so of us would go across to the state house yep. and see uh, and visit our legislators. But you only got to do that one time mm-hmm. throughout the legislative session. So this year we kind of took a fresh look at it. And our staff said, hey, let's try this thing called delegation days. Let's let's do something different. So every Monday during the legislative uh, session, uh, we got a group of about 50, 40 to 50 realtors. We hosted them in our building. We gave lunch. We asked some uh, legislators to come over that were from their specific district. We did this kind of geographically. Right. Uh, right. And then we asked them to come over. We got to meet one on one with a lot of those legislators. And we were able to, you know, uh, be a presence m- across the long haul instead of over one day. Yeah. Right. And that's an incredible thing. Cause you know, I've gone to those legislative days wherever you, you're basically a couple hundred people in a hallway. You might get an opportunity from a distance to see your actual representative and say, Hey, great to see you. As opposed to this one-on-one opportunity, which I think is a much more powerful and impactful opportunity for the people to talk to their representatives. More impactful. And I'll tell you the other thing that comes out of it. When a item comes up during the legislative session, we're there. Right. As opposed to, well, we missed it by a week because we had all 200 of us here last week. Uh, You know, so that was a great, great win, I would say, for the association this year. I think that the members uh, really liked it. We'll try to expand the program, make it a little bit more uh, inclusive as we move forward. Um, But, uh, you know, that was a, you know, byproducts of COVID have come out. Yeah. That have been hugely beneficial uh, as the state association did. We noticed that, you know, our our email opens and our read rates and things like that went up as as people had to kind of hunker down. They, mm-hmm. they looked for uh, help and assistance and guidance and what they should do uh, in going through that. And we've kind of leaned into that a little bit. Not to say we all do virtual events. We love physical realtors or are, are creatures that want to be we social, wanna, right? Absolutely. Face to face is the way to be as much as possible. Yes. So so we're. We're, we're getting back to that, uh, you know, that in-person meeting thing quite a bit with state activities. But there's some things that just work better mm-hmm. uh, in a Zoom uh, application. So you can see more people. You can engage with more people that you wouldn't <clears throat> maybe engage with otherwise. So, um, you know, I think that has been a, a win, something that will stick around for a while. Yeah. And, I, and I'll say, you know, internally within the association, we've been talking about how this is a year of transition. I've heard it mm-hmm. no less than a million times. But I think some of the great things that have come from this transition are the ability to be more nimble and change the way we've been able to engage members and realize that, hey, you know what, face-to-face is fantastic, but let's utilize some technology and opportunity to get more people involved. And I think that's been one of those things that COVID, you know, what call it what it is. It sucked, period. Overall, horrible. But so many great things have come from that just for the association and other things going on that, you know, you got to take a look at the silver lining that came along with that horrible cloud. You can hire a professional speaker for probably half the price or get them or get them twice as often Uh if they don't have the travel expense of having to come in. Exactly. You know, so yes, there is a drawback of not being able to get together with a whole lot of people and your friends, your realtor friends, because I've made so many friends from around the state um, that that, uh, I don't want to miss out on. But there's also an advantage to being able to get on and get a top class speaker. Yes. Um, And we've kind of leaned into that both at our our state association. And I'll say also at our local association of the things we have coming up. I'm very proud of my local association here in Southwestern Indiana uh, for, for what they have coming forth for us. I couldn't agree with you more, more information on that to come in the future. So, you know, Andy, we're closing in our 30 minute time period. It feels like we could do this all day long, but is there anything, one big major takeaway that we should give to the people uh, who are thinking about, becoming a realtor who are a realtor and haven't been engaged something that we could say to say hey this is worth it this is why you should be a member of the indiana association of realtors well i will say that as a as a member of the state association you have a lot of things going for you already right there's some benefits that people don't already see we've got a structure of uh, professional development that's already in place for helping you deal with ethics violations amongst your fellow members we've got a, a free amount of ce that's provided to you every year so the state requires 12 hours we give that to you out of the gate uh, so those things alone are kind of worth your your membership 100%. but the other thing that i would say is that the association both at a local level and at a state level give you a camaraderie that you won't get in any other way so if you need to have a conversation say with someone inside of your own market um, that is sensitive having those friends 
at a state level where they're not in your backyard gives you a little bit of freedom to be able to bounce ideas off of people without having to ask either your competitor Mm -hmm. at another brokerage or your or your uh, competition inside of your own brokerage because they exist too right (laughs) oh yeah um but you can always get a great, uh, you know, great opinion. I've leaned on so many people that I've I've met across the state where I call them up and I say, hey, I've got this crazy idea for something. What do you think about it? Um, and you can ask those questions. So I think that is the, the biggest thing. And incoming referrals from all those other people you learn from around, uh, meet from around the state. Aren't, those aren't too bad either. Those are not too bad either. You know, yeah. I actually got to meet another Indiana realtor while I was in Denver for a conference last week. And it's one of those things that you kind of almost take for granted if you're not going yeah. to these conferences and everything. Um, and I was able to say to this guy, you know, I'm really heavily involved in IAR and everything else. And he was like, oh, I've probably seen you at conferences and things before then. So it's it's definitely an opportunity that is often overlooked. And I think people need to take much better advantage of that. Those networking opportunities are huge, huge, huge. And if you are new to the business or you've been in the business for a while, but you're not fully engaged in your local or state association, I highly recommend it because I think that alone uh, and that networking opportunity is totally worth it. I think the other thing that you really get out of those type of opportunities is the ability to um, stay plugged into real estate, Mm -hmm. but give yourself a little bit of a break from the daily grind and see everything else that's out there. So non-CE professional development is rampant at these type of conferences and stuff. And it's the best part because you come home fully engaged, fully ready to go, plugged in and and, uh, a full battery. There you go. Well, Andy, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you taking some time to come in today and have a little bit of a chat about IAR, local association, and just being a realtor in general. Sounds great. Let's go get some food. Let's go. Let's go get lunch. Hey, this is Aaron Luttrell. Thank you so much for checking out the Aaron Advantage podcast. If you would like to be a guest, please feel free to reach out to me anytime. We're always looking for other people to interview.